In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the front driver's side CV axle. Now the process is the same for the passenger side, but it's not the same part, so you want to make sure you have the right one. Having said that, if you need this or any other part, check us out at 1AAuto.com. Let's get started. To begin, let's remove the wheel. Use a 21 millimeter socket. Unfortunately though, I'll have to use a 22 because my lug nuts have swollen up inside of these chrome caps and that makes them so that they're not really a 21 millimeter anymore. Regardless, let's take off all six and pull the wheel off. With these off, take the wheel off. Now with the wheel off from the back side, you can see the caliper that we have to remove. There's also a vacuum hose here for the hub actuator. I'm going to want to pull that off the hub, so let's do that now. If you have to, you can use a screwdriver, a pry bar to help pry this up and off, just like that. Then with a 10 millimeter socket, remove the retainer bolt for the bracket that holds the brake hose on. Pull this out of the knuckle and set it aside and unclip the ABS wire from this. Let's also unbolt the ABS wire from the knuckle with an eight millimeter socket. If it feels like it's going to break, work it back and forth because you don't want this breaking inside the knuckle. I've already done this, but I'm gonna spray it again with a bunch of rust penetrant. Hopefully that'll work its way in there and help me loosen this up a little bit easier and without breaking it. There it is, pull this off, follow the ABS wire up and unclip it from where it's secured onto the frame. Just like this, follow it up even more. It's clipped right here next to the control arm. Remove it from this retainer as well. I'm going to follow the ABS sensor all the way up here on the fender liner and unplug it. There's a clip on the back side. Press it and slide it out of its connector. Okay, just pop it out. Oh, there we go. That's why it's not coming out. A lot of times these get pretty full of debris here. Now you can pull the wire down. Now have a bungee cord ready so you can tie the caliper and bracket assembly out of the way. We're taking off the whole thing as a unit. Take this 18 millimeter bolt out as well as this one down here. Those will take off the caliper bracket off of the knuckle directly. Leave it on a few threads so that you can have the caliper supported while you take off the other one. Pull it off of the rotor. Remove your rotor. Now we have to get this cap off that hides the axle nut. Take a screwdriver or a pry bar, tap it in here. Now you should be able to just pry it off of here. Then take a 13 millimeter socket and let's remove the axle nut. At this point, you wanna make sure the axle pushes through, which it does, so that's perfect. Next, I wanna unbolt the outer tie rod stud off of the knuckle. To do that, you can use a 21 millimeter socket. Now take a hammer and tap the knuckle right here so the tie rod stud can break free. There we go. Remove the tie rod from the knuckle. Now let's disconnect the upper ball joint from the knuckle also so we can tilt the knuckle forward. Use a 21 millimeter socket. Put the nut back on a few threads to hold the knuckle as you break this free. And just like we did for the tie rod, hit the knuckle right here and it should pop off. There we go. Pry the control arm down, take the nut off, pull this up and the knuckle will come forward. Now get the knuckle off of that upper ball joint, pull it forward and there you go. At this point we have to unbolt the vacuum hub from the knuckle. It's held in with a few eight millimeter bolts. Try not to break them. Spray them with rust penetrant and work them back and forth. There's one, two more to go. There's one more on the lower front side. There it is. Now let's tap it off of here with a pry bar. Try not to break it. Okay. There we 
go. Pull it straight out like this. Now pull the axle out of the bearing, slide this off and set it aside. Grab a long pry bar, stick it right between the axle and the differential and pry it out. There's not a lot of space to pry on, but if you just pry just in the right direction and from the right area, you basically can only pry from the top between the upper part of the differential here and the axle or at the bottom. They give you a little area here, but that's about it. So you just have to have a very long and sturdy pry bar. And with the axle popped out of the differential, lift it and slide it right up and out. I guess you'll have to go down with it. Okay, try to get it past that differential and then up and out. There it is. When it comes time to installing the new axle, if you don't have a new seal for it, you're going to have to reuse your old one. I recommend a new seal, but if you had to take this one out, be very gentle. It does come off. You just have to watch out how you pry so that you don't damage it. Put even pressure on it, and there it is. On the new axle, make sure you have a clean surface to work with here. Obviously, it should be, but if you have any debris that got on there, just wipe it off and then take your seal, whether it's new or old, slide it over, and with a punch, gently drive it on. Make it nice and flush with this lip. Wipe off any debris that it might have caused. Now take the axle, slide it down into position. Try to get it inside that differential. Spin it to line up the splines. There we go, those are lined up. But we still need to continue pressing it in until it's completely bottomed out. So what I like to do for these axles is put the axle nut on. That way it gives you a larger surface to hit on. And then take a rubber mallet and tap it through. You don't want to use a steel hammer because you don't want to damage the threads on the end of the axle. Okay, you'll hear a difference in sound. I'm pretty sure this is bottomed out, but I'll give it a couple more taps just to be sure. Okay, yep, it's definitely bottomed out completely. And there you go, axle's installed into the differential. At this point, I would like to add some grease to the axle here, pack some on this uh, ridge that's cut out there. You definitely don't want it to stay dry. This part of the shaft actually rides on some needle bearings, so it definitely has to be lubricated. Put some on the splines here, not a lot, just a little bit to coat them. Okay, and try not to get any on the threads here. The threads need to stay dry so that the axle nut can clamp on properly. This is about the amount of grease that I would want on the axle anymore, and it'll just squish out everywhere any less and it won't be enough. Make sure there's no debris in here where the bearing sits and then I'm going to add some grease over here as well. Grease all around this, the splines here and make sure that there's plenty of lubrication for when these engage. If these are not greased properly when you go to engage your four-wheel drive it'll either skip around or it won't be able to lock in. The gears will grind. It's just not going to be very pleasant, so you definitely want to make sure that these can glide on and off smoothly. Now take the vacuum hub, slide it over the axle like this, aim the axle down, put the vacuum hub on the knuckle, we'll bolt it on now, but the reason we have to do it this way is, well, as you remember, the axle doesn't come out with this bolted in. So let's clamp this down with the three mounting bolts. third one is at the back here. Use your eight millimeter socket and tighten these up. Make sure they're nice and snug. About an eighth of a turn after they bottom out is the most I will go for these. Uh, these are very small and they do strip out easily. They can also break easily and you definitely don't want to have to extract these out of the knuckle. Okay, right about there. Okay, double check them all. 
At this point, I want to bring the knuckle up, make sure the axle actually slides through here. As you bring the knuckle up, make sure the upper ball joint on the control arm lines up. Looks like I'll need a pry bar to pry this down enough. Have the upper ball joint nut ready. Stick the pry bar in between the spring here. Once you get it close enough, put the nut on. Take your 21 millimeter socket, pry down on the ball joint, and snug this up. The torque for this is 85 foot-pounds. The knuckle will spin because the tie rod's not connected yet, but once it bottoms out, you'll be able to torque it. That's 85 right there. Plug in the vacuum hose for the hub actuator. Make sure it's bottomed out completely. Let's get the tie rod stud back in. Press it down all the way into the knuckle. Put the nut on, and we'll torque this to 85 foot-pounds. Put the axle nut on. We'll torque this to 20 foot-pounds after we bottom it out. It's easy to hold the hub at such a low torque. If you can't, just put a pry bar in between. Make sure it's on the flat side so it doesn't damage the threads. And hold the hub from spinning by the pry bar. Put this cap back on. I like to put some grease around the ring here. If you want to put RTV, you can. Tap it in with a rubber mallet. Make sure it's nicely seated. I have a new hub here. If you still have your old one, go ahead and clean it up so that these two ridges right here are nice and smooth. There's no buildup, no rust, no debris on them. And then we'll go ahead and coat them with any seize. And I will do that regardless of whether it's a new or an old hub. I also have a new rotor. If you don't have a new rotor, make sure the backside is clean like this one. Sand it down if necessary. Make sure you don't take off too much material though. And then slide it on. It's important that these two sit perfectly flat up against each other. And to secure this, I'm gonna use a lug nut to clamp it on. You don't have to make this very tight. Just put it on here by hand so it can hold the rotor and prevent it from falling off. If it falls off and rust gets behind here, it'll sit crooked once it finally gets tightened down. And then you'll have some issues driving down the road, especially at higher speeds. Now let's get the caliper over the rotor. Start in the two caliper bolts. Bottom these out and then torque them. The torque for these two is 136 foot-pounds. Let's get these reconnected, these brackets here. I'll start with the brake hose, put this back on. Nice and snug, about an eighth of a turn after it's bottomed out. Start the ABS wire in. Okay, bottom that out, make sure it's snug. Over here, clip this into the brake hose retainer. Follow the ABS wire and clip this into this bracket over here. Run it behind this brake line. There's one more retainer for it that has to clip in right over here next to the vacuum hose. And the last part is to plug it in. Make sure that clicks and secure the connector onto the fender liner right there. Now let's get the wheel back on. Start on all six of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and torque them in a cross pattern. It's important to do that so the wheel can seat properly to 150 foot-pounds. Here we go, 150 in a cross pattern. And there you go, you can double check it if you want. If not, take it for a road test. So there you have it, repair is done. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, don't forget to leave a like. If you have anything to say, leave it in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thanks for watching.